Hey guys, it's Leanne. It's Lena. So for this week's video, we wanted to share with you all our house testimony because it was a very wild, wild journey that we went on. And it's just very mind blowing how it all happened and we're living in the promise right now. So we hope that us sharing this video will go towards encouraging anyone who may be believing God for something and anyone who may be getting weary in the process of it all. We wanna share our testimony to help push you across that finish line. We'll kind of just break this down along a timeline just to give you all an idea of how how miraculous this entire process was. So, um, it was back in 2022 um, towards the summer months. So it was like towards the end of May, uh, beginning of June. Uh, we were at that time living in our apartment unit and we were going through a lot in our apartment unit just with different management companies overtaking the building and um, maintenance issues to the point where it was getting really tiring and um, let's just say we started getting, experiencing like rodents coming through that place and the thing just to give some background about us we were pretty set on like pretty much staying in that apartment for pretty much forever like we didn't have really any plans to move out but then that stuff started happening and that was i guess kind of a god sign was like of saying yeah, it's time to it's time to move <laughs> so and the roof started caving into i'm like how no we were living on the third floor which was the top level of the apartment complex and like it wasn't even raining that much for the roof to start caving in i'm like okay yeah this roof the water is leaking on my bed where i'm laying my head so yeah i gotta i gotta go so god made it very clear that it was time to move in that process we i was beginning to be more open to it just because of what we were going through and i remember one day he specifically said look for a house i said look for a house with what money because <laughs> at that time we were not making we were not making big money at all and we were in like a apprenticeship program through an AmeriCorps program and if anyone knows AmeriCorps does not pay well at all it's like the crumb of the crumbs so I'm like look for a house you're funny so I just thought it was like kind of a joke or I thought it was me but I still was like obedient to what I heard I was like okay let me just start looking for houses I was just looking for fun because I thought okay that's funny I'm just looking for fun and as we started looking we both we're pretty adamant and firm about staying in the same neighborhood where our apartment was at at the time we knew that that's where god wanted us so we were intentional about trying to look for houses in the area and it was one day that i was looking on the different listings and we saw this one really cute one-story house that was right in the neighborhood like right down the street from our apartment and i was like this must be it like this gotta be the house and like even the number the house number was perfect and everything because it led me to Psalms 27, specifically in verse four, it says, this is the NLT version. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. That was really the heart behind it. And we knew that as we were looking for a house, just for those of you who know our testimony and all that we went through, uh, we knew that our next place, we wanted it to really be a place where we would really just worship the Lord for all that he's brought us out of and delivered us from and so when we saw that house number we were like oh this must be the house the house where God wants us to be able to continue to praise and give him the glory and so I started trying to figure out how do I actually get in this house to see the inside of it because online it was immaculate when I looked at the pictures I said ain't no way <laughs> <laughs> at that time we were in an America program and that Amer that specific program was coming to an end in July. Yeah, so both of us were trying to go and take a look at the house and get a tour of it. But in order to do that, it required us to have a pre-approval for a loan in order to even view the house. So during that time, like she said, our apprenticeship program was coming to an end in July. And so that same summer month, um, we were wanting to go look at the house so that was a little bit tricky to get a pre-approval if our our employment was about to about to end. So, so we hurried up, reached out to some of the staff to say, hey, can you just quickly put together a letter for us showing that we are employed with y'all? And so they were able to give that letter to us in July. By the time we were able to send it over to the loan officer, he informed us that the house was actually under contract already. And I still was holding on to hope. I was like, oh, does this mean that 
is completely off the market or because I think at the time it was just pending but then eventually somebody else closed on it and I was like oh come on but that didn't stop us from like continuing to house hunt because we yeah. still felt yeah. God yeah. telling us go look for a house yeah. we just let that go that specific house go but we knew that he was still telling us to find a house there was still a purpose in us specifically looking at that house because it was actually through that house that we got connected to our realtor so we long before we found our realtor and she was a major blessing in this whole journey and we started just continuing to schedule just working with her to schedule showings with different houses we were primarily trying to look in our neighborhood but it started getting hard because there wasn't many houses that were being sold at that time so we started opening ourselves up to like other neighborhoods and the thing about us and this uh, house search we really had like no standards for <laughs> the type of house we were looking for I, i'm just bringing that up to say that like, this was really not our idea at all like i was willing to take a boarded up house at that point and so me searching for a house was really out of obedience to god i really didn't care what type of house it was I just knew it was some type of purpose, something that God was wanting to do out of us getting a house. So I didn't really care what it was. If God told me to get that boarded up house, I was going to get that boarded up house. And just to give context of why we would even like accept like a boarded up house connected to our testimony um, back in 2020, we also housed a, a pregnant lady who was going through like a domestic violence situation and she had two younger kids. and. During that time in our apartment that we were living in, we allowed her to stay there with us. And um, that was just our passion for solving the affordable housing crisis and just wanting to solve the homelessness issue. So when it came time for us to finally leave our apartment because of all of the rodents and like the roof caving in, uh, we knew that if we were to move, we wanted to be able to Continue. continue that passion of providing affordable housing and just learning ways how we can do it in an effective way and also with wisdom too because that was <laughs> a hard learning experience just that whole situation that was really the heart because like i said when god first told us to get a house i said for what i don't need a house i'm fine in this apartment there's no need i don't need to it just felt like it was unnecessary for us at that time. I, t I told God, I said, the only way I'm gonna go get a house is if I can continue to help people. Like if, if this is just a, more a selfish type of endeavor, I don't, I'm not interested. And so that was really the, the lens that we were going into this house hunting journey with. And eventually, since we were first time home buyers, uh, we found out that we would actually need to get some type of certification to actually proceed with the process. So uh, that's when we finally, in August slash September, uh, we started really taking our time to work on an education course. So we were connected to a local nonprofit to be able to go through that um, education. And it took us a little bit because we were also coming back to school at that time. So it was kind of a bit much to balance, but we were able to go through the program and we completed and got our certification towards the end of September. So then it was after then that we proceeded with our house hunting. Yeah. So during that time, we went to a few house showings and they were all nice, but none of them really like pulled at my heart. And I wasn't really like, I was like, mm, it's okay. Like they were all nice, but I just didn't really feel like that home sense. And so we just still heavily felt like it still needed to be in the specific neighborhood that our apartment unit was. So one night I was just looking online and again, I looked up the neighborhood that we had been living in for a while and I wasn't expecting anything to, sh to pop up. But then I found one house that was in the neighborhood. And when I clicked on it, I was just mind blown. I, I said, this can't be real because all of this looks like animated and fake like the house the way it was designed and set up didn't look like it was real especially like just the way that it was so eloquently put together i was just mind blown like now i have to see this because i don't believe it so we were able to contact our real estate agent and um, schedule for a showing for that house and so it was like at the very end of September when we actually were able to come and see the house and all the other houses prior to this house we were looking at like single families so but then this this specific house was uh, the first house that we looked at that was a duplex I'm like dang god why I need such a big house for? <laughs> like why I need two houses <laughs> we were walking through so we first came to tour the house we went through the downstairs and 
I was already blown through the water. You would never expect the house to look like that. And like, it's just unexpected in an area like this. And then I started realizing why it was a duplex because of, we already said that the only way we were gonna get a house is if we can continue to house other people. And so it started making sense. Like it started clicking, like it's like two houses you can literally house another person and also have your own space because the last time we did that, uh, no boundaries. <laughs> When we were helping that family, it was just, you got to a point where we couldn't even stay in our own house because it was just too much going on. And yeah, so God said, okay, I appreciate your heart, but let's have a little bit of boundaries so you can kind of still be effective. Yeah. And then as soon as we were walking up to the upper unit, we walked through the doors that were coming through the kitchen and immediately there was a surround system and it was, worship music playing through the house. I said, wow. <laughs> that was our heart for the house anyway, was for it to be a home, a house of worship and connected to Psalms 27, a house where we can dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our life and just, just meditate on his beauty. The specific song that was playing was, it was called Jesus is Love. So he, he just made it clear as day. He's like, this is what I want. I was just overwhelmed like the whole time. I don't think my mouth was closed. <laughs> I said, oh yeah, this is the house. And the thing was, all the houses were outside of our budget because we were not not making money. But this specific house, it was like beyond our budget, like <laughs> way, way, like triple our, our budget. I was like, but at that point, it was just so clear to us that this was the house that God wanted. I said, I don't care what I gotta do. I just gotta, I just gotta get it because he wrote his name on this thing. So <laughs> I gotta, I guess gotta do this. And so after we saw the house, we came to, to a decision like, yeah, let's go into contract for this house. And so that night we let our real estate agent know like we wanna put an offer in for the house. And so we pulled our savings and put the earnest money down to secure it. And at that time, since we graduated from that apprenticeship program, called Public Allies in July. During that time, we were working part-time jobs in the summer. And then for me, I had two part-time jobs just to make ends meet. As we were going through this journey, because we only had part-time jobs, that became an issue with being able to secure a loan. The loan officer we worked with at that time, he let us know that most banks will only approve you if you can show like you have full-time employment. So it didn't even matter that I had two part-time jobs that made up the same amount of hours as a full-time position. They wanted something more, I guess, stable in their eyes. So they didn't see part-time as really stable because it's like, they just wanted something more solid, I guess. So that was annoying. <laughs> so we found that out like early October. So we, how do we secure something full-time like fast? Because we knew that this house was on the market and a house that looks like that, <laughs> in a way it's gonna stay on the market long. So we needed to move fast. I had the idea to return back to the apprenticeship program that we just graduated from because since we already knew the people there and we were well acquainted, um, they allow people who graduated from the program to do another year. So it's called a fellow year. So I reached back out to my program managers and the executive director to see if it's possible for me to return back because the program already started in September and at that time it was October. So I reached back out to see if it's possible for me to come back. And luckily we were able to return. And so we wanted to come back to be able to have that proof that we have full-time employment. So once we got that out the way, we are like, okay, cool. Now it's smooth sailing from here, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> we were able to get that all squared away with unemployment and we started submitting all the documents that were necessary. And we officially got into a lending contract for this house. Um, October 26th, so the end of that month. At the time we also, we were recommended a new loan officer through Axe Housing, which was the education program that we went through for becoming homeowners. And so we submitted everything we needed with her and got under contract for the house October 26th. And so that morning she connected with our real estate agent and we started getting the ball rolling for the house and we were super excited. That same night that we got into contract for the house, we got an email from that loan officer about something with our credit. I was like, with our credit, we got some pretty good credit. So I'm like, I don't know what the deal is. And so we got this e this really long email showing that all of our credit information was mixed up. So pretty much the credit mixed ups was my debt being reported on her debt and her debt being reported under my name. I was like, 
And I guess I was like, oh, I guess because we're twins and our names are so similar <laughs> and our social security number is super close. That must be why. And I didn't really think it was a big deal. So she just let us know that we probably have to call them and tell them to fix it. She told us to call all three credit bureaus. And so we reached out to each and every one of them. And I never thought trying to get something fixed on your credit could be so difficult. Like we called them and we told them what the issue was and what needed to be fixed and clarified that we were twins and that our information was mixed up on each other. So we told them to make sure that they fix it. And so we thought that was all settled. But then our loan officer reached back out to us and let us know like, hey, we still need this fixed. And I, and I told her, we already told them to fix it. So I don't know why they're not fixing it. So then we ended up having to call them back again. And this was, oh, this was, I never have been so, my patients have never been tested the way it was tested during this period that we were dealing with the credit bureaus. It's like, it just didn't make any sense because it started getting to the point where we would have to call them every single day and they would keep giving us the wrong around. Like at one point, at one moment they would say that it's the bank's fault. And so we called the bank and the bank would say, they have nothing to do with it. It's the credit bureaus incorrectly reporting. They just kept trying to blame all these other parties when it was them. Yeah, it was just to the point where I couldn't even focus in school anymore because every single day we were trying to call because at this point, re remember we already put down our earnest money. And so the thing about earnest money, if at some point the seller decides he's not gonna proceed with the contract with us, we lose all of our earnest money and we put a bad amount on this house because that's how much we believed in this house and we were willing to put our all on it because if it's what God wants, uh, he gets it all. So I was like, I'm not about to lose literally thousands of dollars that I just put on this house and then not even get my money back on it. I'm like, no, I already put too much at stake on this house. I can't even get into the details. Like we have long email threads of us going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with our loan officer talking about how the credit bureaus is, are not responding to us and not getting what we were asking them to fix. And throughout the whole process, the consistent saying that we kept hearing people say was, I've never seen anything like this before. I'm like, wow, that's how you know this is not normal. A lot of times when you are a person of faith and a believer, and you start believing in the things that God tells you is yours, that's when the battle comes and that's when the devil will try to fight you. Like, who do you think you are? You can get this or who said that that's yours? So it was just a huge fight to try to get just simply the, uh, the pre-approval to get the loan on the house. Let me just backtrack a little bit for the timeline. We went into contract on the home October 26th, found out all type of stuff was mixed up with our credit bureau that same night from October 26th all throughout November. It was just a constant back and forth with the credit bureau was trying to get it fixed. And keep in mind, we had originally signed a contract with the seller to try to close on the house November 11th. That didn't happen. We went through like three or four different amendments on the contract to keep pushing the date back. And that's not a good look. Like, that's really not a good look. The, the seller gonna look at us like, y'all sketchy. Like, why am yes. I gonna give you this? <laughs> yes. I said, Lord, why you got me out here looking <laughs> like this? I already am like hanging on by a thread with not looking like I even have enough income for this house because the amount of money we make with that apprenticeship program and the amount, the cost of this house, it wasn't, it wasn't. The math's math. not math. <laughs> so I'm like, you're gonna have to do a big one on this one if you really want, if this is you, you have to pull through on this. And then December came, still wasn't fixed. I'm oh like, Jesus. <laughs> And at that point, I was just really like, okay, God, I must be tripping, like, forget it. <laughs> I must have heard you wrong. And I remember it was, we were literally be at work. Her office was like right across the street from my office. So she would come to me every time on our lunch break, we would try to just keep at this because we just weren't trying to lose everything that we put on this house. And I remember specifically, it was December 12th. She came over for lunch and I wasn't even trying to think about it. Like, I was like, I'm just trying to eat my lunch. Like, I'm not, I'm just so tired and exhausted. 
But this girl decides to pull up and as soon as I get in the car, she is on the phone with the people, with the credit bureau. And that just, that just, just really made me mad. I said, I don't want to think about this. So I just stormed over the car. I said, no, I'm not thinking about this. Because at this point, I'm done. I just let it go at that point. I literally, I remember when I sat in the car, I said, at this point, it's not God's will. Like, at this point, I just let it go, God. Like, if this is not your will, I don't care. It's, I'm just not, I don't care anymore. And honestly, even when I was calling them, it wasn't really even faith. It felt like, it was just so routine to call the credit bureaus every single day that it just became a habit for me. I wasn't even putting much thought to it. So I was just like, I'm just giving it a call. Like, I don't really know what's gonna happen, but I'm just gonna call. <laughs> At that point, I was like, no. And I'm a person of faith. Like, I, I believe that I heavily operate out of the gift of faith, but it had to be that bad for me to just be like, just forget it. I'm usually the one who encourages her with faith, but this time around, the, the script was flipped. As soon as I walked back into my office, I was getting ready to do work. She was texting me. She was just apologizing for upsetting me because she knew that this stuff was really making me mad. <laughs> I told the people, hey, can you fix this? Because y'all keep mixing this up and I, I've been calling every single day for you to fix this. So they told me that they would take a look at it. And so I was just gonna have to wait for their response. And then right when I got back to my office, my loan officer, text me and said that it's fixed. I said, <laughs> right away I texted her and let her know, yo, it fixed. And it's like, she had been already texting me at that time saying that I think we're good. And I just kept telling her, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they're lying. <laughs> they had been giving us the, the runaround. runaround for the longest because they they would consistently tell us it's fixed and it's not. So at that point, I just didn't believe anything they said. But then when she screenshotted and said that our loan officer pulled our reports and said that it's gone, like the mix-ups and everything is fixed. I was like, <laughs> wow, like, wow. God really spoke to me in that moment saying, like, when you let go of control, that's when I can come through. When you're always like trying to do it out of your own strength and all that, I can't move. So when, like, it was literally the moment that I let it go and I surrendered it, like, it was pretty much him working on my heart and saying, will you still serve me even if I don't do this for you? And at that point, I was just so fed up. I was like, you know what, God, it doesn't matter. I still, at the end of the day, I'm still gonna serve you and I'm still gonna do what I need to do. And it doesn't matter about this house. Like, it's not, if it's not your will, it doesn't matter. So everything was fixed December 12th. So I was feeling good. I'm like, okay, God, we're about to pull through on this. Two days later, December 14th, we get a text from our real estate agent. And she says, hey, just want to let you know that the seller let me know that he's trying to put the house back on the market. I'm like, why? We literally got everything fixed. Like we're about to, we're about to close on this thing. Why, why would you, why would you? <laughs> and but I could understand because he had been waiting all these months just for us to get a pre-approval. Any seller would look at somebody who can't get a pre-approval like, yo, y'all, y'all good over there? What's going on? Y'all scammers or what? <laughs> or but it wasn't even our fault, but it, that's just how I was feeling. I'm like, everything is just really set up against us. That makes us look illegitimate. And I'm like, and I was, I was just really begging. I said, Lord, please, like everything, the credit stuff is over. Like we're not having to deal with that issue anymore. Please have mercy. Like please have <laughs> a little bit more grace because it's literally gonna work. And I was letting our real estate agent know, like, can you just please let him know? Like, can he just wait a little bit as our loan officer is getting all the documents together now that our credit is clear? Because at the end of the day, him putting it back on the market, it would just cause him to have to restart the process all over again and that would make him have to wait longer. So at that point, working with us at that point would still be the faster route because we were already had our ducks in a row and it only was a matter of two more weeks to get all that squared away compared to if he put it back on the market, he would have to wait months again. So she was our, she was just really advocating for us. And she was, she later texted us that afternoon that she was able to convince him and got him to lean a little bit. I said, thank God. <laughs> he was willing to continue to work with us. And it was December 20th. We finally got our official loan commitment from the bank. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> You don't know how much mental turmoil we went through 
trying to get this house. Like even me talking about it, it's taking me back. Like my <laughs> my head is my head is spinning thinking about it. And on top of just the credit stuff, there was also another battle with like being able to find insurance companies that would offer us home insurance because what the seller didn't tell us was this house this house went through three house fires. I'm like. So how are you gonna wanna put this house back on the market, but you didn't wanna tell us that this house went through three house fires. That's not fair. I'm saying, but you wanna be, not have show me any grace for something that is not my fault, right? The credit stuff is not our fault. So you can't even show grace about that. But, and the thing was, nobody else would have been willing to buy a house that had gone through all that stuff. But we, because God's name was on it, Jesus signed his name on this thing. We saw the value in it and we were willing to do all it took to get it and to invest in it. December 20th, we got our loan commitment from the bank. And then it was just still another process to get the final signings done. And we were trying to figure out a date to officially come to the closing table with the closing costs and just the signatures. That specific year, a friend of ours uh, invited us to a conference called Urbana. So it was a Christian conference and we had never been and so it was a true blessing to be able to be invited and to be covered for that conference. And so our loan officer at the time, she was trying to get the closing date for December 30th. But that date con conflicted with the Urbana conference, which was December 28th through the 31st. And so we were try really trying to figure out how do we close, still close on it quickly because we knew that the seller wasn't trying to wait any longer. <laughs> we were initially trying to get it for December 27th, the day before Urbana, but it wasn't gonna work because there was like a, a process with the paperwork that it took three, three entire days to process. So we ended up signing the papers December 28th, which is the morning that we were gonna leave for Urbana. So uh, we signed the closing letters, but we weren't gonna be able to move in right away. <laughs> After all of that. The day that we finally got the keys, we didn't even get to go to our house. And anybody else would be anxious to you know, get in the house. But I'm just really grateful that God did it that way. He was really asking us, will you still worship me before your promise? Like, will you still remember the promise giver over the promise? So mm -hmm. the whole process that we went through was still making sure that we weren't making an idol out of the house. And then even at closing, he wanted to make sure, hey, don't forget about me mm -hmm. when you get this promise. So I want you to go to this conference where you can experience me with other believers, a four day worship conference. Will you still give me the praise? Will you give me the praise that I deserve for pulling through at the very last minute? Yeah. And on our closing day, we didn't have to pay any closing costs. Like we got two grants <laughs> that paid off the entire cost of the closing. And the grants actually covered beyond the closing costs. So we actually got money, money back. back. Like money in our pocket. <laughs> like they paid us. We were supposed to pay them, but we got paid. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's just. God definitely did a big one with this. Yes. And it's just mind blowing. And like just the way that his hand was all on this whole journey just showed us like, if God says something, he's always gonna be faithful to pull through. If this was his in the first place, why would he not come through in order to make it happen? Because if it was his will, and if he spoke it, he never changes his mind or goes back on his word. I'm just forever grateful. Like every time, every time we're in this environment, like, look at this. This just this gives a little glimpse of how immaculate this house is. <laughs> like this came with the house. We didn't even decorate the house. It came like that. I'm not an interior designer. God designed this thing. <laughs> like, wow. And we definitely have many more testimonies coming because it doesn't end here. This is only the beginning. But yeah, we just really wanted to get on here because I was really being convicted because I'm like, how can I stay silent about a testimony like this? He done did all this and I have not said not, I have not gone public about Like we made posts about it, but not have, we haven't gone like fully in depth about like specifically sharing it in a video. And we've been in this house for over a year now, like almost two years and every day is worship in this house. But he was just asking us to go public 
about it fully and we just really hope that us doing so just goes to help encourage anyone out there who may have gotten a word from God and you know that God has promised you something but you have been getting weary in the waiting period you've been getting it's been getting raggedy <laughs> you're like okay God you said but it's not looking like what you said make it make sense just keep holding on, I promise you. When God pulls through, you're gonna know it was all Him. Mm -hmm. He wants to take all the glory. He doesn't want you to try to figure it out or any of that. Because when you start trying to figure it out or try to do it with your own strength or when you try, try to start controlling everything, that's when He can't move. It's only when you surrender and let it go and say, okay, God, I trust you with this. If you said it, you will do it. Mm -hmm. I just gotta just take the steps that you show me. If you tell me that this is mine, I'm not gonna give up on it. I'm gonna keep having faith and keep fighting for my promise. And also to remember like we don't lean on our own senses because everything about this story, anyone will look at it like it's not possible. This is not gonna work out. It was our faith that brought us. It was him that showed showed up when nothing looked like it was gonna work out at all. He's working in the background. He's just not letting you see it. Like, that's not your business. <laughs> it's not. So he said, get out my business. <laughs> Nowhere in this story could we have given ourselves the glory. We had no qualifications no. for this house. There was nothing that could have possibly, on paper, it looked really bad. Like, <laughs> When God approves you, God approves you. It doesn't matter what man says. It's mm -hmm. not it's not man's qualifications, it's God. God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. And most importantly, just remembering like anything he ever does that he deserves all the glory. And so that's what he wanted to show with this experience in this journey of ours. He just wanted to show his power, basically. He just wanted to show that he is real, he is involved in our life, and he's involved in your life, and he wants to just completely blow your mind because he's just that good of a father. Like the song that ran through this house when we first walked in, Jesus is love, and baby, this house has shown us so much of his love and how, really how wide, how high, how deep his love is, because, and it's just been a place where we really just been restored from all the years that we have experienced so much trauma and pain. He just, just wanted to just restore to us the years that we experienced loss and heartache. And lastly, we also wanted to share this because in your journey towards purpose, there will obviously be battles that you'll have to face, but just continue to hold on to God because he's the one that fights your battle. You don't have to fight it. You simply just have to pretty much stand still and watch him fight your battles. And you still have to go to battle, don't yeah. get me wrong. He, he gonna still expect you, you gotta, you still gotta go. You still gotta enter into the field, like you gotta, gotta go. But just know that you won't be fighting alone and you're not fighting with your own strength. You're fighting with his strength. Mm -hmm. One thing we learn about the enemy is that he's always gonna fight you when, you when he sees you moving in your purpose, moving in your assignment, in your promise because if it wasn't something attached to that, why would he fight you? How you know you're moving in God's will is oftentimes you will face opposition. Especially because when we were open to looking for a house, it was for his kingdom purpose. So because our desire for home ownership was bigger than ourselves, and it wasn't for our own selfish intentions, God wanted to bless that, but the enemy didn't like the fact that we wanted to do it for something bigger than ourselves. So always know like, when you walk towards purpose, which is always bigger than yourself, there's gonna be a fight. So I know that this was a longer video, but we just wanted to really lay out the details to show that God definitely was in every single detail of this process, of this journey, and to show that, and we just wanted to just provide a, like a, a real life uh, example of what it looks like to operate out of faith and to continue to put your full trust in God because it says that those who wait on the Lord, renew their strength. Just to encourage you to keep on trusting, keep on holding on and keep holding on to the faith because he is faithful to perform what he said that he would do. Oh yeah, definitely know that if he could do something like this for us, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than you can ever ask, think or imagine. So whatever your wildest dream is, he's gonna do bigger than that. We definitely hope you enjoyed just hearing us share our testimony, and we definitely give God all the glory that he deserves. And we will see you all next time.